Welcome to a new episode of the Woolly Thistle podcast, coming to you from the gorgeous state of New Hampshire. Today is Friday, January 24th, and I'm your host, Corinne, and this is episode 110. The Woolly Thistle brings your favorite yarns from the UK and Europe and makes them easily accessible in North America. At thewoollythistle.com, you will find the best of British yarn, such as Blacker, Uist Wool and Jameson and Smith to name a few. You will also find yarns from Scandinavia, including Olcentrum, Plotolopi, Rauma and Tuku Wool. At the Woolly Thistle, we encourage woolly wonderlust and we share information about where the wool was grown and milled. We specialise in finding yarn made at the source, whether that be on wild Scottish islands or in the Devon countryside. We find it and share it with you. With excellent customer service and beautiful yarns to peruse, you will love shopping at thewoollythistle.com. That's two L's in woolly. The Woolly Thistle welcomes and seeks out customers, designers, authors and yarn makers of all backgrounds, ethnicities, cultures, locations, ages and orientations who possess a love of wool and craft. We value your work and your contribution to making the Woolly Thistle a safe community. You are welcome here. Let the woolly thistle do the international shipping so you don't have to. Thank you, new and returning listeners. It's great to have you back. Or if this is your first visit with us, I hope you find us to be friendly and enjoyable. So thanks so much for listening. The best way to keep in touch with us is through our newsletter, which you can sign up for at thewoollythistle.com. Uh, we have two L's in woolly, so don't forget that. And you can follow us on Instagram at thewoollythistle. So how are you doing? We're well into January now. In fact, this might be the last Friday in January, I think, that this goes live. I've been enjoying its slower pace. I've been trying to purposefully calm down and just relax a little bit, get a wee bit more knitting in, though I was talking about this on my last episode that January has been a bit of a funny knitting month for me. I've not been able to decide what to knit next and things. But I'm happy to say that I got over that hump. And I'll tell you about what I'm knitting on in just a minute. But yeah, January, it is so cold here right now. We didn't even let the chickens out the coop today. And we put in some hot mashed up stuff for them to make sure they get some warmth in their wee bones. Bless the wee chickens. And uh, yeah, it's just really cold. It's very snowy. We had a huge dump over the weekend. So we're in full on winter, which makes being at home in the dark really quite nice. We put the fire on, we hang out together in a kind of small space so that we can stay warm together. And uh, I do quite a bit of knitting and the kids have been playing cards and then sometimes we all just sort of go off and watch our own screens which is not very good but uh, I'm glad to say that most of the time we're hanging out together. I hope your January is going well and that you're not too cold and that you're able to keep warm and that you're getting lots of knitting in so do let me know. This episode includes off the needles, on the needles, Cal News, Katie Greenbean update and the Woolly Thistle update. So very quickly, there is nothing to report on Off the Needles. So yeah, not a lot to tell you about Off the Needles because I haven't finished anything since those red socks, which I talked about last time. But on the needles, I did cast on and started knitting on a vanilla sweater, which is a top down raglan, quite wide it will be cropped sweater that I am taking the measurements uh, from Anne Budd's book. She has a very good book called Top Down Sweaters, I think. And in there, basically what you do is you knit your gauge in the yarn and the needle sizes that you want to knit with. You knit it up, a little gauge, you block it, 
And then you measure that and then you plug in that gauge into her book. And depending on the style of sweater you want to knit, she tells you all the numbers you need, which is really, really nice. So I have been wanting to knit a very vanilla raglan top down type thing for a while because I have a favorite sweater that's in Tidal Yarns. And she actually provided a pattern for that, which I cannot find. It was only ever a print pattern and I'm sure I threw it out accidentally but I've gone to Ann Bud's book and I've been able to recreate this myself so that's good it's taken me forever to get around to it but I'm glad I have and it's just a little crew neck raglan I'm doing 48 inches around and uh, so it's got some it's got lots of ease in it and it's cropped and um, yeah it's just super simple stock in it so I finished the body and I'm not sure I can't remember exactly when I cast it on but it's just a few days maybe um, by the time you're hearing this it will have been a couple of weeks I think I cast it on on a Friday and at this point I still have to do the sleeves which will be three quarter length and super fast. So yes, I'm really enjoying it. I'm knitting this with Rama Fennel Garn, which is a fingering weight yarn. And I'm using color 4128, which is a lovely pink on dark gray. So it's kind of a heathered color. What's really nice about using Rama is that you can trust their dye job will be very consistent in their in their lots. So um, I don't need to worry about adding sleeves, uh, having, you know, had them on waist yarn. I don't need to worry about trying to match up uh, skeins. I can just go so long as I'm staying within the same dye lot. So that feels like an easier thing to have to deal with or something I don't actually have to deal with, which is nice. It's not interfering with me getting on with the knitting. So yeah, by the time you hear this, I will have maybe finished one of the sleeves. Maybe uh, finishing off the second one even. Because I do record these a little bit in advance of when they go out. So I've got lots of knitting to do just to finish that up just the sleeves the body's done so uh, I'm really enjoying that it feels like a palette cleanser it's something I know I'm going to use a lot in my wardrobe and it's something that I think I want to knit more of because they're so easy to throw on over a long shirt and uh, jeans and then you kind of feel you know if you put a nice necklace on too you know some sort of long beady thing or something you can dress it up so yeah I am very excited about that and can't wait to wear it this is my first Rama garment as well so I'm really interested in how the yarn is knitting up uh, did I say I was knitting this on a US 6? I think it is a 6 from memory. I don't have it right in front of me here right now. It might be a US 5, but I think it's a US 6. And um, it'll be interesting to see what happens once I wash this and, and things bloom, if they're going to bloom, and just what the finished look will be. Yeah, very excited. So, and then after that, I'm back in that same place I was before which is I don't know what I'm going to knit but I think Susie uh, who works here at the shop has um, given me some very interesting food for thought her daughter was recently visiting and selected some yarn and she selected John Arbin knit by numbers DK that we have here in the shop and Susie her mom knitted her a ranunculus in it Yes, some of you know my adventures with the ranunculus and that it basically was a trunculus because I stopped knitting on it (laughs) because I kept messing it up. I was knitting mine with Devonia 4-ply, which is a lovely, lovely yarn. But I was not getting along with the pattern and not for any reason that is the pattern's fault or even anything complicated beyond my ability except to say maybe divide for the sleeves evenly and not create extra stitches where there shouldn't be any. I don't know what I've done with that. But anyway, Susie came in with this ranunculus in DK White from John Arbin and I kid you not, it was knitted on US 10s. It was beautiful, very, very drapey, very, very soft, unbelievable. So I think I need to knit myself a ranunculus in the DK weight, which I think I'll find easier than trying to knit uh, something that is a very slim fingering weight on big needles. 
Um, that might be part of my problem. I don't know what my problem is. I have many, but I was just not getting along with the um, ranunculus before. But I think I want to try it again because I love this FO that Susie brought in and uh, I can't stop thinking about it. And I love the detail on the cuff of the sleeve. Yes, I think that's what's probably up next for me. A nice quick knit. I also should mention there is quite a bit of talk afoot in my little social circle about doing a Bresse knit along. The Bresse by Marie Wallen, that lovely purple sweater with the colorwork yoke that goes down the sleeve, similar to the Lovage, which me and my friends have all knitted now. And so there's talk of a Bresse along, probably very, very low key, very relaxed. And, um, I'll need to get more yarn in so that I can join in and do that. I quite fancy that. So that might be uh, on the horizon as well. So there you go. That's what's on the needles right now. And really, I mean, there's some other things on the needles, but they're in time out. So we're not going to talk about them. What do I want to knit, though? I want to knit mittens. I want to knit all the mittens. There's so many beautiful, beautiful color work mittens out there in the world. And uh, that's coming right up. We have... Our fifth annual Woolly Thistle Mitten Along starting on February 13th. It will run for six weeks. We're purposefully starting it on February 13th, which is a Thursday and is Galentine's. And we figure, you know, for the most part, though boys are welcome, we're mostly gals doing this knit along. And so we're going to have a Galentine's celebration. And if you are a boy, come on in. You'll be perfectly safe. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to cast on February 13th. We are still putting details together. I'm sure we'll be doing that right up to the end. Um, but we'll have a cast on party on that day where, you know, you can post photos and things like that. And we will have a cast on prize, which is a nice tradition that uh, was started a couple of years ago. So keep your eyes peeled. We will be posting about that on social media. We are going to run it as usual from our Ravelry group. And yes, I just need to get a few things organized just keep your eyes open. <laughs> Get your knitting ready. Decide what mittens you want to knit. There will be uh, lovely uh, prizes and discounts offered by wonderful designers and all of those will be listed in the Ravelry group as we get going and I will make mention of them as soon as soon um, as soon as I can. I'm very excited that Katie Greenbean is visiting the Woolly Thistle. She will be here on April 4th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. We are currently asking you to register your interest in attending so that we can try and get an idea of numbers. You can go right to the Woolly Thistle's website and in the top right hand corner in the menu, you will see Katie Greenbean pop up. In the menu. If you click on that, you can enter your information on a very short form, just letting us know whether or not you will be attending. And as we collect your emails from there, we will be able to email you with all the details. It's a very high interest event is turning out to be, and we will need to figure out a way to manage that. We might have to do it by lottery, although I think that's a last resort. We might break it down into chunks of time where you are invited to come, you know, at this time versus later on in the day or something. We're working it out. We're also trying to work out if um, if we'll hold it here in the shop or somewhere else. So I am hoping, though, that the Woolly Thistle will be, you know, our products will be available at the same time because I know that many of you would like to visit the shop. And so we should make that available as well. So more details to follow but she is coming and she will be here with lots and lots and lots of her lovely lovely artwork on April 4th that's a Saturday so if you are interested in attending register your interest on the shop website and that way you will be kept up to date as the details become known and sorry I'm being distracted by what sounds like a really big airplane flying over we don't get very big airplanes flying over here. That's why I noticed it. Okay, 
My latest YouTube shop update was Saturday, January 18th. And if you watched that, thank you very much. Uh, we were featuring By Hand Serial 11, which is focusing this time on Vermont and New Hampshire. And uh, the Woolly Thistle gets a very nice mention in there, which I was thrilled about. We are still selling pre-orders for By Hand, but its launch date is right around the corner, Saturday, January 25th. So we do have some in stock still, and if you order yours, you will get it very quickly. Thank you so much if you've placed a pre-order. It's been a great response so far. And now it's time for a Woolly Thistle shop update. The Woolly Thistle's doing great and as always I really appreciate you shopping with me and telling your friends about the shop as well as sharing on Instagram when your order arrives. All of this helps immensely to get the word out and helps me to continue growing our offerings that in turn you get to enjoy. So thank you very much for your help with that. Just a reminder that we're still offering free shipping on orders over $99, which is down from $120. And uh, I think many of you are enjoying that. So we're keeping it going for now. And I had just mentioned By Hand 11, which comes out January 25th, which if you're listening to this in real time, will be out on tomorrow. Saturday. And we still have a few pre-orders left. And so they will turn into actual orders come Saturday. So we'll be getting all the pre-orders out in time for Saturday. So that's what we're doing this week. Although we're still waiting for them to arrive here as I, as I talk to you right now, but they'll come in and we'll get them out in time for the launch date. And By Hand 11 features Vermont and New Hampshire. They were here in the fall. So beautiful, beautiful colors as you would expect in this lovely New England part of the world. And so if you have any interest in northern New England and uh, New Hampshire and Vermont specifically, consider getting yourself this copy. I love this magazine. I always say it, but I really, really do always have because they're featuring various areas around the country and it's sort of like your own craft-centric travel magazine so that you know if you want to go visit somewhere you know right off the bat the beautiful places you can go and see and I'm thrilled to again mention just in passing that the Woolly Thistle got a lovely write-up in their uh, New Hampshire and Vermont issue which is this one so yeah if you're interested in that we do have some pre-orders left and um, and we'll convert those into orders come Saturday Lina, 52 weeks of socks. Oh my gosh, this book is making all of us hot under the collar. I know that I've had a huge tidal wave of interest in the book. So we will be getting that hopefully right on time for the launch date. They've made it very tight for us, um, but that's the way it is. We can open pre-orders on February 8th. And their launch date worldwide is February 14th. My hope is that we'll have the book here well in advance of February 14th. But it's going to be tight because we can't place our order with them until February 8th. So we only have a few days to play with. Uh, and that's the same for everybody in the US. That's not a limitation just on us here at the Woolly Thistle. That's everybody. So we will do, as you know, our level best to get the books in and get them right back out. We will open our pre-orders on February 8th. It will be a first come, first serve system. So the sooner you get your pre-order in, the more chance you have of actually getting a copy of the book. They're doing their first print run, and I believe it's actually smaller than than I would have liked because I think there's going to be limited availability of the book. However, they are already talking about a second print run, which will be ready very quickly after the first. So if you don't get your book in the first print run, there will be a second print run right away. It's my understanding. So while you might be delayed right at the beginning, it won't be long until you get your book. And I will be ordering as many as they let me do that because I know you want your book. Yes, it's all very exciting and a little bit up in the air and a little bit touch and go. But 
I live for that stuff. It's really exciting and fun and uh, energetic. <laughs> and I can't wait to see this book. Uh, have you looked on Ravelry to see the different designs? They have all the designs up on Ravelry, all 52. And many, many, many of them are absolutely gorgeous. In fact, of course, they're all beautiful. But there is several in there that I would love to knit. And a few of them use Tuku Sock Yarn, which we have here at the Woolly Thistle. And there is a sock design for the Woolly Mammoth's Natural Sock Yarn. And we will have that yarn in stock here. That's one of the new yarns that's coming to the Woolly Thistle uh, as a special run. And we're very excited to be getting that. We'll have a few different color choices for you. So do keep in touch and uh, keep a watch out for that being in. I hope that we'll have that sort of in within time for the book, but I'm not sure. Uh, these are hand dyed, natural dyed sock yarn uh, skeins and we we have to work with Emma's schedule, but I do believe they'll be here at some point in February and it would be nice if that dovetailed with the book. Yeah, so the designs are all on Ravelry, so you can go look and see. Lina has also been putting them up on their Instagram feed, so you can see them there. But this is definitely an encyclopedic type book of sock patterns that I think we are all going to love knitting with. We have for sock yarn here off the top of my head, we have West Yorkshire Spinners Signature 4 Ply, which comes in the Country Birds and the Floral Collection and the Cocktails Collection, which are all self-striping or, you know, various different patterns. But we also have the solid colors. And I think many of those textured socks that are in the book would knit up really well in West Yorkshire Spinner's signature four ply in a solid color and I I think I'll be doing that to see how they they knit up for me but I have no doubt that they would look great and you know yes West Yorkshire Spinner's has nylon in it but honestly as you know when I knit my socks I like to put them in the washing machine and I like them to last a long time. And I wear my hand knit socks exclusively. I don't wear any other socks anymore. And all of mine are lasting really well because of the nylon content. So that's a good thing for me, I think, that, uh, that I can throw those in the wash and hang them up to dry, wear them out, except they last forever. So a little plug for West Yorkshire Spinners sock yarn. It's good stuff. Brand new in the shop, we have two new books, Maya's Swedish Mittens and Winter Knits from Scandinavia. And both of these are hardback books with beautiful photography uh, featuring mittens from Sweden and or Scandinavia. The Winter Knits also has some hats in there as well and, and some socks. These are lovely colour work designs, so really nice if you're planning uh to join us in our mitten cow and uh, the, like I say beautiful photography really lovely charts that are clear and easy to follow they're both in English and I think these are lovely books to add to your collection we were doing pre-orders for Wished by Kate Davies and her Knitting Seasons and Bold Beginner Knits. I'm happy to say those are all now in the shop and available to you we also got back an oldie a relatively oldie but a goodie book, and that was Shetland Ooh by Tom Barr, who is Kate Davies' husband. Shetland Ooh features the movers and shakers on Shetland and their work with wool. So you've got the lovely Oliver Henry in there, Ella Gordon, and lots of other wonderful people. And it's a lovely uh, photographic journal with some words by Kate in there. So I got more of those back in because they always did well. And we have in stock right now Marie Wallen's Gentle, Meadow, Shetland, and Wildwood. So those four books that um, sell constantly really well. I actually have all four of them available right now in the shop. So grab your copy if you were hoping to get those or one of those. And we did expand the kits available in Meadow to include all seven designs from the book. Unfortunately, they are sold out right now. But when we get more yarn back in, 
then um, all of the Meadow designs will be available in kit form. Meadow is her book, her second book for Jameson's of Shetland, uh, so the Spindrift. And Gentle and Wildwood features her own yarn, British Breeds. Uh, as I record this, we're just waiting for the last box of yarn to arrive. And once that comes in, we will be able to get um, some orders that have been waiting for those colors. We'll be able to get those orders right out. We'll make them a priority. And uh, we'll also be able to fill kits again. So her Primrose, which is the cover picture on the Gentle book, it's just a gorgeously pretty pretty sweater so we'll have kits for those and as well the mistletoe tam which is a gorgeous uh little hat featuring uh, several colors maybe even all of them i can't remember there are 16 shades in british breeds and this yarn is really really amazing i think first of all it smells wonderfully sheepy when you first open the bag i love that I get totally high on that. <laughs> and it's a worsted spun yarn, but it's fairly loosely plied. It's got a gorgeous sheen on it, very glossy, but it's also uh, very soft and obviously plays well together with the other colors. All designed by Marie Wallen and spun up at John Arbin in Devon in England. So we'll have all that back in. As soon as it arrives here, we'll get that all in the shop and uh, you'll be notified that it's back in the shop if you signed up for a notify me email, which I always recommend you do. And then when you get that email, go for it. <laughs> okay, we're completely sold out right now of Shetland Wool Week annuals, but more are coming. We'll have again 2017, 2018, and 2019. And uh, when those come in, uh, we'll have the Fula Snood kits again, which is in Jameson and Smith. And that's a beautiful cowl. It's a double length cowl that you can wrap around twice. It's in two colors. And the pattern is by Donna Smith, and it was featured in 2018. I knitted one. I love it. I wear it all the time. And we made kits for that. And we'll have the seaweed sweater as well as a kit with 2019. Have you signed up for a newsletter? If you have, you will receive a monthly newsletter that includes subscriber specials, which are different every month and we try to give you a discount in there or something special that nobody else has access to. You can sign up for our newsletter at thewoollythistle.com. Also, just a reminder, we have free shipping starting at just $99. Let's talk about Jameson's Spindrift. This is the yarn that is in the books Meadow and Shetland, both by Marie Wallen. And Jameson Spindrift is a colorwork yarn that comes in 25 gram balls. And it's the uh, sibling, if you like, to Jameson and Smith. Both of these yarns are from Shetland. They are both Shetland wool. And Jameson's Spindrift is actually spun up on their mill in Shetland. So um, they have that claim to fame. And we have been stocking just enough of that yarn to create the kits that we stock. But we did promise that we would start adding to that with other colors and then um, sell the balls individually as well. So what we're going to do, we are pretty much sold out of all the kits. What we're going to do is we have added uh, the new colors we ordered, of which there are quite a few. I don't know how many off the top of my head. Quite a few, though. And all the colors that are still available um, that uh, would go into kits. We're going to open this up and have a little flash sale for the weekend starting Saturday the 25th. And you can buy individual balls of Jameson and Smith from us in any color that we have on offer. And this will last the weekend, so it'll be available Saturday and Sunday. And come Sunday night, we'll shut that back down again. We'll do a stock take and we'll order more yarn for the kits again. So this is very exciting. Jameson Spindrift is interchangeably uh, usable with Jameson and Smith. 
I have used these two yarns interchangeably and together in projects, um, in the same project. And usually the reason for doing that is I want a certain color that uh, one line has, you know, so you can mix and match it all together is what I'm saying. Don't be afraid of doing that. So now we have even more <laughs> Shetland wool, 25 gram balls, tons and tons of it. And we're very happy to have it. We love this yarn. We love both uh, Spindrift and Jameson and Smith two ply. They're both brilliant even though they are the tiniest bit different from each other, but they're similar enough that you can use them together. So I just wanted to say that if that was a concern at all, it basically is expanding your color work stash to have both of these available to you. So do be on the lookout. We will send out an email letting people know that we're planning to do this over the weekend. And of course, you know, the early birds will have the biggest choice. And also there'll be the um, By Hand magazine going live on Saturday as well as a regular order. So lots happening on the weekend. So don't hang around if that interests you. And like I was just talking about Marie Wallen, we're still waiting for a couple of, uh, of her colors to arrive here. And then we will have the full complement of 16 shades. And that will mean we should be able to populate her kits in British Breeds, which from Gentle include Primrose and the Mistletoe Tam. And from Wildwood, that would include the cover picture, which is the Hawthorne Cardigan. We also have Holly, which is a lovely sleeveless vest, and the Walnut Tam. So those three from Wildwood should be able to be available as a kit. If you watch my YouTube updates, you will remember recently that I was talking about Hebridean yarns, uh, that lovely dark brown chocolate, dark, dark, dark chocolate brown. And uh, it's my favorite small breed yarn. And I was showing you yarn from Berlin, yarns who are on burn array in the Outer Hebrides of Scotland. So they're in the Hebrides. This is Hebridean yarn. But Meg of Berlin Yarns, well, not recently, a while back stopped wholesaling her yarn. But out of the blue, she got in touch with me after that episode aired. But I don't think she watched, watches my shop updates. <laughs> but she got in touch and I feel like good karma, you know, comes around. So she got in touch and offered me to sell her yarn again, at which I didn't even blink or think anything about it. I said, yes, 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 yes. So we have Berlin yarns coming back to the woolly thistle and I am totally pumped. Since we last had her yarns, which is over a year ago, maybe a lot more, can't remember. Um, she now offers it up in 50 gram balls and so we'll have that all four ply. Uh, and I do believe that we'll have colors as well as the dark chocolate Hebridean brown and there'll be a cream and I'm pretty sure they'll be gray as well. So I'm very excited about that. Keep a lookout for that coming. It's actually on its way over here right now. Uh, Scotland and the islands have been having some really tumultuous weather, which does slow down us getting our yarn. I know that Shetland wasn't receiving or, or were expecting to not receive yarn or be able to get it out because the boats were not sailing in the North Sea during the storm because it was a bad one. And I know that um, Berlin Yarns was also trying to work around that big storm as well. I love that. <laughs> and I know they're all okay and doing well. But yeah, they get weather there for sure. And I have more new yarn coming. I did just mention the Woolly Mammoth and her natural sock yarn, which is an all natural, no nylon sock yarn, hand dyed with natural dyes by Emma. And I'm very excited to have her yarn back. And um, yeah, that her yarn is featured in the 52 Weeks of Socks book and will also be in Making Stories magazine issue three as well so she is making the rounds and that's great uh, making stories magazine issue three will be out in the next few weeks and I'll talk about that a little bit nearer the time 
I just want to mention, as I do, because I'm very excited for this to come back, is the Exmoor Sock Yarn by John Arban Textiles that is scheduled, as far as I know still, for March 2020, and we will have that as soon as we can get it. Armscott Manor, uh, we are all sold out of their four-ply, but we have more DK on its way, including the lovely dark brown Black Welsh Mountain and their Portland, which is cream, and a blend of the two, which comes out to these gorgeous grey tones. Um, so we'll have all of that in DK very soon. What else do we have? We recently got in Jameson and Smith's Laceweight Yarn, and I just got word that they do have more cones in again. So we are preparing an order for those cones. I know lots of you are waiting for them. We will be getting those in soon. We tend to order the natural shades. But if there's something uh, different that you want, you just have to let us know and we will add it to our next order. And Tuku, we have been selling an awful lot of their fingering weight and their sock yarn. And so I think I'll be putting a new order in for that soon. We still have good supplies. So check if there's something that you're looking for. The price of Tuku is going up on February 1st to $12.75, which is still competitive. But I've had to uh, consider putting the price up a little bit because the wholesale price went up quite some time ago and uh, I, I ate that. But it's time now to sort of recalibrate that. So I'm letting you know that if you want to knit, uh, say, a sock out of 52 weeks of socks that features Tuku sock yarn, then you should jump on that before February 1st. So go to Ravelry and have a look and see if you want to get a jump on that before the price goes up. But once the price goes up, it, it's up to $12.75, which is, again, like I said, still competitive. At the end of January, we are planning to do your very popular Jameson and Smith grab bags. Again, uh, we've, we've had a lot of people sign up to be notified when that will be back in stock. So I think we're going to do that just before the end of the month and I'll send you out an email when I'm going to do that. And you'll also see it on Instagram as well. So yes, I think just keep in touch and uh, be signed up for our newsletters. That's the best way to get all the information that we have going on here. I think that's enough blether from me about what's going on in the shop. I'm sorry if I've missed anything really important, but I do think I've hit all the highlights there. Thank you so much for taking the time to join me and listening to me going on about my knitting and the shop, blethering on as I do. I hope you will have a lovely couple of weeks until we chat again, but I'll see you on the YouTubes before then. So I think all that's left to say is if you go out, take your knitting. Bye-bye. That's the end of another episode, but it doesn't have to be over. Thank you for listening to the Woolly Thistle podcast, brought to you by the Woolly Thistle online shop. You can find items discussed in this episode at thewoollythistle.com. That's two L's in Woolly. You can find our Ravelry group by searching for The Woolly Thistle. Find our podcast on iTunes or at thewoollythistle.com. You can speak to Corinne at hello at thewoollythistle.com. Follow The Woolly Thistle on Instagram at The Woolly Thistle and join our newsletter for subscriber specials and all the news right on thewoollythistle.com.